Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having better weather than I'm having and you guys are getting out there fishing. As you can see, it is snowing out today. It has been snowing out for the last three days uh, and raining and really cold. So nothing for me to do. I can't go fishing, so I'm just gonna make a video. I had a bunch of guys ask me to do a video on um, fly fishing gear and uh, how they can get started in fly fishing. So I thought I'd go over my rods and reels. I picked out a couple of them here. And I'm gonna go over a few different rods, few different weights, and a few different um, reels that correspond to those fly rod weights. So um, I'm gonna go over those. Uh, yesterday I made a video and it was way too long. The damn thing ended up being 35 minutes long. So I figured today I'd make one and do it shorter. So to start off with, I'm going to start off with uh, um, my smaller rods and then work up to my bigger rods. Uh, the first one we have here is my Reddington. This is a shorter rod. This rod is um, a nine foot, uh, or this one's actually eight foot long. Uh, okay, so I'll open up this. This is the, the, the travel tube it comes with. Uh, to start off, we'll take out the butt section this is a reddington path this is a four weight and it's eight feet and it's a four piece rod that means there's four pieces to this rod they connect through the ferrules it has ferrules on the pieces you just connect them together you got little dots on here on each piece to line it up and you put it together um now let's just go over the weights here a four weight now a four weight is kind of an arbitrary number because it really doesn't pertain to the to the action of the rod, it doesn't pertain to the size of fish you can catch or anything along those lines. All the four weight is for is, like I said, it's an arbitrary number and it corresponds with the reel and it corresponds with the line inside that reel. The line inside the reel will be a four, four weight line and the reel will be a four weight reel. So like I said, this is four pieces. I'll go over this one. Like this is the butt section, uh, has your cork handle, has your reel seat. And this, uh, this one just happens to have a really nice reel seat. Uh, it's up locking, which means you put the reel in and then as you spin it, it goes up and it pushes the reel up into the, into the reel seat here. Uh, high quality cork on it. And then you have the tip piece. This has your tip top up here, has snake guides along, along it. And take out the next piece, the same thing, you know, it just gets a little thicker and it's got your two guides on here instead of the five that are on this one. There's four on here, or two, two on here. Then you get to the last piece and this one will have uh, a Fuji uh, guide on it with has an insert and it has one snake guide. And this is the last piece that actually connects to the butt section. Then you just put them all together. Um, they have ferrules on them so that way they, you know, well, each piece will only fit to one side so you can't put it together where it's not right. Um, to give you some price examples, this 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 Reddington path is this one cost about $189. So it's not real expensive and it's it's not real cheap, so it's in between. Fly rods can go all the way up to like you know twelve hundred dollars for a fly rod for, for some of the sage fly rods and the Winston fly rods, which are all custom made fly rods. I mean these are handmade. Um, and a lot of the sage are all, every, every one of the good um, fly rods are all handmade obviously, but there's some that are, you know, I don't know, I guess you're paying for, for, for um, or you're actually pay, you're definitely paying for quality and then a Reddington is not a, brand, a bad brand to go with. I have a few Reddington rods. So that's my four weight and a nine, and an eight foot. Now we'll move over to my five weight rods. It's a, I have a case here, it's a double case, carries two rods, it also carries the reels inside of it as well. Which makes it really handy for when you're out fishing, you don't have to put the reel on and all that type of stuff. It, it makes it a little bit more convenient. All right, so the next rod I have here is a five weight rod. This one is uh, eight foot six, and it is um, a Reddington CT, which stands for the Classic Trout Series. Uh, this rod again is a really nice rod, really high quality cork, really nice reel seat, um, and it's also up locking as well. Now, the reason why I got this rod in a, in a five weight and it's shorter because most five weights are nine feet, is be and be the other rod there that the four weight is because in Colorado you have really small small um, 
creeks and or streams and they um, they're real tight so it's hard you gotta you know navigate through there when you're navigating through there you don't want to have like a 10 or 9 foot rod or even say a 10 foot rod you don't want anything really long you want something small and compact and not only for, for navigating through when you go to make your cast in, in, the, in that type of situation you don't have the room to be doing the these huge you know uh, double haul casts and stuff like that what you want to use is called a roll cast so you're only coming up to a, a little bit past 90 and then flipping it forward and you roll the line roll the um you roll the line so the, the line doesn't go all the way behind you it rolls this way and goes about the same distance behind you as as little past 90 degrees and then forward so it makes it to where you can cast really tight casts really accurate casts so you want to have a shorter rod and um, and like I said, this is a five weight for when I'm fishing a, a smaller creek that has a little bit bigger fish. I want to have something that can handle that, and a five weight is perfect for that. The four weight is for when I'm fishing, and I know there's smaller fish in there. I'm fishing for brook trout, or I'm fishing for smaller cut th cutthroat trout. Um, and I'm like up in the Rocky Mountain National Park, and I'm way up in the mountains, and I'm, I'm you know I'm trying to navigate through tight cover and stuff like that. So then you get a shorter rod, and it'll be a lighter weight or you can get a five weight that's a shorter rod and you can you can handle bigger fish if you know there's going to be bigger fish in the water and just like the other one this one has the pieces you know it has all the this this is the four same four same four pieces to it or, you know they all connect together but the cool thing about this one is not only do they put a, a, a guide a guide dot on, dot on there which helps you put them together and line it up it also has the eight eight foot six five weight on it just in case you have multiple Reddingtons because this rod will come in multiple different sizes. You can get this in a five weight, in a two, in a three weight, four weight, a six weight. So this makes it just easier. So that when you put it, put them in a, if you were to be traveling somewhere, take a multiple rods with you, you can differentiate which is which. So I really like that feature too. Uh, that that rod right there probably costs about the same, 180, 89 dollars or so. Um, so it, it's it's a fairly inexpensive rod it's not super expensive and it's not super cheap um, the next rod I have in here is also a five weight and this is the rod that I fish with the most uh, this is my pride and joy I guess you can call it um, this is my most expensive rod uh, I actually bought this rod probably three years ago uh, this is a G Loomis Pro 4X in a in a nine foot length and it's a five weight uh, it's a really nice rod really high quality uh, cork on here I need to I need to condition this cork because it's been been a while since I've conditioned it um, it's got a really nice reel seat uh, it's a really nice rod my, my favorite rod most fish rod um, I fish this rod when I go fishing at lakes or if I'm fishing in say like a river like the Arkansas River that has really big fish in it uh, so this this handles those, those fish really well um, this rod I can also fish for you know not only for bigger trout I can fish for bass uh, I could fish for a, a lot of different species with this rod and it'll handle most of those those um, those types of fish. Um, with this one as well, you know, it's a four piece rod. It's got all four pieces. They all connect together. You got your tip, your, your tip section and then you have your, your, uh, this is your, the section that connects to the butt section which has your, your uh, Fuji um, guides on it with the inserts. Then it also has two more guides on here as well. Um, this one's a little different than the other rods because it doesn't have a, it doesn't have any snake guides on it. Um, the snake guides this is a rounded looking guide that most fly rods have. This one actually has rounded uh, guides on it, and it's not a um, not the swirly part, the swirly type, the, the snake guide like on, say this one here, where it has snake guides instead of uh, the rounder guides like this one. Uh, this is a little bit more higher end rod. This rod actually cost me when I bought it new. It was about 400 and I want to say 490 dollars or something like that. So I actually treated myself to this rod, saved up for it for a while. I had you know because you want to start off with something cheap and work your way up as you become more efficient in fly fishing. You don't want to go out and buy a really expensive rod and then get into fly fishing and for some reason you don't like fly fishing or something and you're out that money. The good thing about it is fly rods do do carry their value quite a bit um, especially the higher end ones uh, you can probably if you were to get into fly fishing and, and, and realize it's not for you then you could actually sell it for for a pretty good price. Um, 
Now let's go. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you a couple rods. I won't go into too much detail on them. They are more of a specialty type rod, where it's um, for a specific type of fish and a, fish, a, a specific type of fishing situation. Uh, the first one is this rod here. This rod is an eight weight rod, which I take with me when I go on vacation to say to Mexico or if I go down to the to, to Key West or something like that in Florida and uh, I'm fishing for bonefish, permit, some tarpon. I mean, this, this rod is an eight weight rod. Um, it's it can handle a smaller tarpon. I wouldn't want to catch a large type of tarpon on it. It'd probably handle it, but there, I might run the risk of breaking the tip or, or the tip section because it, be, it uh, some tarpon will be a little bit too heavy. Uh, like I said, this is an eight weight rod. It's still a single handed rod. Uh, has a really nice cork handle on it and it has a fighting butt on it. The fighting butt is so that way it gives you leverage. So if you're, you know, you're fighting a fish, you have, you have somewhere to, to have leverage here or even down in here if you really got a good one on there and you're doing it with, you know, you've got it tucked in tight. Um, this is an inexpensive rod. It's from Cabela's. Um, it's a three, the three forks, nine foot, eight weight rod. Um, I picked it up, like I said, for, for going fishing in, um, down in uh, Florida or down in, Me in Mexico, fishing for in the ocean. It's a really good rod. And this rod will also, you can catch you know steelhead with it. You can catch uh, smaller um, salmon with it. You could also do some carp fishing with it if, you, if that's something that you were, look, you were wanting to get into. So like I said, it's a four piece rod. And the last one here is my, oh, oh dropping stuff, is my Okuma. Wow, that's really cool in there. Right. Is my Oku uh, Okuma. This one here is a nine foot two piece rod. Instead of having four pieces, it's only got two pieces. With, this is an option that you could get. It's a little, um, it's a little less travel friendly uh, since it is, you know, it's a longer one piece and then it has another longer piece to it. Uh, each piece is four and a half feet long. So it makes it a little harder for it to, to take a, take around with you. Uh, this is a six weight rod. Uh, it's one of the first rods I ever bought. It's my oldest rod. I've had this rod for maybe um, I don't know, close to four or close to eight years now. Uh, when I first bought this rod, I think it was like a hundred bucks. Uh, Might have been a little bit more. I don't remember. But it's a it's definitely a great rod, and um, I use it quite a bit. All right, so that's my rod section there. And then I wanna go over a couple things about rods. Rods come in different types of materials. Most modern rods are out, made out of graphite. Um, graphite is a very, um, how, how can I say this? It, it, it makes your cast very, I don't wanna say simple, it makes it a little easier with the graphite rad, rod as a graphite rod will load your line a lot quicker. And it also makes it to where it has less rebound when you cast it. Uh, all fly rides have some sort of, uh, I don't want to say rebound or recoil, but that's pretty much what it is. As you load the rod, it flexes, right? And as it goes out, if you had say like a bamboo rod or, or a fiberglass rod, it tends to do this more, do this longer than a, than a graphite rod. And it's actually considerably longer. And it's more of a, a technical type fishing. Uh, graphite rods make it make take away a little bit from the technical side of it, so it makes it for everybody to be able to fish it. I really like graphite rods, and I recommend graphite rods with their, for anybody who's looking to get into to fly fishing. I know I had a lot of questions from a lot of guys who uh, wanted me to go over some some fly fishing stuff because they're looking to get into fly fishing. We're all anglers, and we all are open to different types of fishing, and fly fishing is a very enjoyable way to fish. Um, so my recommendation for anybody going out and buying uh, fly rod is to go to somewhere like Cabela's or to um, to uh, Bass Pro Shops. They have a fly shop there. Uh, I think theirs is Wind River, and then um, uh, Cabela's. I don't remember what theirs, but their their actual fly fly rod place is called. But uh, Cabela's has really inexpensive reels and really inexpensive um, rods for anybody who's looking to get into it. Those would be my recommendation, recommendation on places to go get it. Um, I, I would steer away from going into a fly shop and buying a rod unless your fly, sh your fly shop has a good selection of lower end rods. Uh, they do, and, and, and but most fly rods, most fly um, shops want to carry the higher end stuff because it's f more niched for the experienced fly fly fisherman. Don't I, I, I'm not saying don't go into a fly rod if you're new, 
are going to a fly shop if you're new definitely go into a fly shop with if you're new they have a lot of knowledge and they do have stuff that you can buy there um, and I and I and my recommendation is to get a five weight in a nine foot length that is the most that, that is middle of the middle of the it's middle of the um, the road right you have a zero fly rods go from zero rate all the way up to 14 weight zero weight being the smaller rods 14 weight being the bigger rods you, you go fish for damn sharks with a 14 14 uh, weight rod and then the zero zero weight rod would be for more for like it's also also niched for people who are going for really small fish or something along those lines so five weight nine foot you'll be set and good to go now I'm going to go ahead and move on to my uh, reels and try to make it a little quicker. I don't want to have too long of a video. This one's already gone 20 minutes, so uh, we will start with my smallest, or well, actually I'll start off with my biggest reel here. Now this reel is an 8 9 reel, weight, 8 9 weight. Uh, it has 8 eight weight line on it and that line is weight forwarded and it's a floating line now lines come in different types of, uh, of, of of material most almost all of them have a floating section to it and then some of them have what's called an intermediate tip which has a it's a sink tip for when you're fishing on a lake and you want it you want that tip to gradually sink down as your leader sinks down too so it, you can get real deep um, so yeah, this is an eight weight rod which I use for fishing in the ocean. Like I like with the eight weight rod over there, I fish in the ocean with it. It's a larger arbiter reel, um, and it has a lot more line on here than than say like a four weight or a five weight. Um, this is from Cabela's. It's a their Prestige Four series, and it is fairly inexpensive. I bought this on sale during Christmas a few years back, and it was only like thirty bucks. So that's for people who want to fish for larger fish you get a larger arbiter reel and um, it'll handle those fish um, my next reel here is a five weight reel and this is uh, a bvk is a the name of the reel the brand of the reel is a tfo which is a lefty um, reel it, it, you can google uh, tfo and it'll it'll show you the reel if you're interested in this reel um, this reel is, like I said, is a five weight. It has five weight line on it. It's a weight forwarded line, and it's a flo and it's a floating line. Um, it has a leader on it, and I'll go over all that stuff. It has backing on it too, and I'll go over line backing and leaders in another video, for, for, so that way this video doesn't get too long. Um, this does have it does have a detachable spool, so you can buy the spool separately, so you can put different line on here. Because even though this is a five weight reel, it'll still take four weight line. It'll take a five weight line. It'll take five weight line. That's that's a sink tip. It'll take you know different types of lines. So if you were interested in just having one reel but having multiple spools because you could buy these separately, then that's a way you could go. I don't actually own spools because extra spools because I have, you know, I have multiple five weight reels and they have different um, line on them. I prim I primarily fish just a weight forwarded uh, five weight line, so they all have that. And I I do have sink tips for when I'm fishing in lakes, but I'll go over that in another one. It does have a drag on it. Um, sorry, I didn't go over the drag on the other one. The drag on that one is fairly good, but the drag on this one is really good. Um, you can set the drag with the drag wheel here, and you can configure this to be left or right-handed. This reel here, the the little the little uh, three or the little uh, three three two. There's a two three weight reel. This reel at, at Cabela's was nineteen dollars. Uh, I got it when it was on sale during Christmas time. Usually they're I think like twenty nine or something like that, but on, on Christmas it was. Uh, it was down, marked down to $19 for, a, for their sale. This reel here, the TFO, this one I paid, I don't, I'm not sure what I paid for, but this reel normally is about $229 for this reel. Um, this reel that I'm going over, my favorite reel, sorry to be going back and forth guys, but this reel here was $129 on uh, Allen's Fly Fishing's website, plus if you sign up for their newsletter, right now you'll get 10% off or 15% off. So it brings the reel right down to about $90. Uh, excellent price for the reel. They, these reels are just amazing. Some of their reels are just really, really nice. I mean, they are higher in price, but if you compare their reels to a uh, larger brand reel, or uh, I don't want to say larger brand, but a, a more prestigious brand reel, they match right up and they're half the price. Uh, this reel, like the other one, it has a little thing here you turn and it has a spool that comes off so you can buy extra spools for it and they sell this just the spools on their website. Uh, the thing that makes this, this, this reel my favorite, not only is it very nice to look at, 
but it is um, the drag system on here. The drag system on here is butter smooth. I mean, you could hook up to any fish with this, and you'll be able to handle it. I'm not saying you can go catch a, a large bluefin tu or a bluefin tuna with this or anything like that. But you could, any trout, no problem. Any bass, no problem. Uh, I would say some steelhead. It would probably hand it, handle it. It would go. It would be a little tricky for it, but it'll 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 still handle it. I mean, it, it's. It, if you were if you were to get this in your hand and you just feel that dra that drag and you just turn this handle uh, you know backwards where you you feel the drag, it's just it, it's beautiful. Uh, it's a great reel. They come in many different colors. This one here is an orange color, or a burnt 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 orange color. They come in purple. They come in green. They come in pink, which is for their breast awareness awareness. Um, but a lot of their a lot of their Colors like the purple and the pink are, are um, limited edition or in limited quantities. They come up on the website every once in a while. Uh, so if anybody's looking into getting into fly fishing and wants to get a decent reel that's under, it's right around hundred dollars. This is the way to go. This reel is awesome. It's just a great reel. I'll have a link for it below. All right, guys. So that's all my. Uh, that's not all of it, but that's just the ones I'm going to go over with you guys now. Um, I just figured I'd get this out there. I wanted to do something for the fly fishing for the guys that have been asking, and they, most of the questions were about fly rods and fly reels. So there, there's uh, this is for you guys. Um, like I said, I recommend anybody who's going out to, to buy one for the first time go to Cabela's, go to go to Bass Pro Shops, uh, even some places like uh, Dick Sporting Goods has um, fly rods where I've got where I picked up my Reddingtons from. They have really good prices, and like I said, they have sales all the time, so you can find them for really good deals. Um, get a five weight, nine foot rod. Perfect for a beginner. It'll make it to where you can cast it really easy. Make sure it's graphite. Don't go out. Don't go to a fly shop and buy a, um, you know, don't go buy a fiberglass rod or even a bam bamboo rod, but because those are a little trickier to fish. So. Um, I hope this helps some of those guys out, and um, I hope that you guys don't mind me making a fly fishing stuff because I'm still, I, you know, it's 5280 fishing. I do multiple di different types of fishing, multiple species. So I know this will help these guys out. If you have any questions on something that I didn't go over today, just comment below or send me a uh, send me a message over uh, Instagram or or, um, or Twitter, and I'll get back to you guys and, and answer those questions or maybe even make a video for you guys. Um, sorry I haven't had much fishing videos up. Uh, it's been snowing out. The weather has been crappy for the last two weeks. Um, I'm going to go out today. I know I'm probably going to not catch a single fish because it's really cold outside. It's somewhere in the high 30s, maybe low 40s. Uh, it's raining uh, slash snowing slash whatever crap is going on out there. Uh, it's horrible weather, but I've got to go out fishing. Today is the last day of the month, and if I don't fish today, I'm going to lose to Chase. And I will be sending him out the Black Max reel because he will have beat me because he caught fish. Uh, I didn't really put it off to go fishing. It's just that I really, the weather's been really bad the last two weeks when I was planning on doing the fishing because I have a timetable to where I want to keep it so that way the, the sub challenges work out every, the, same, the same every month. And it puts it puts every puts me and the contestants on an uh, even playing field, so that way I'm not fishing for I'm not fishing a separate month from the month that's supposed to be fit, that we're supposed to be fishing. So hopefully I catch something today. If not, uh, I'll get a hold of Chase and let him know uh, how things are going. So um, with that, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna have another live show next week. I'm gonna get with uh, with. Um, I'm going to get with uh, some of the guys and see if they want to get together and do a live show. So I have another live show, questions and answers. If you guys would like to comment below on what you would like the topic to be for next week's uh, live show, comment below and let me know. Uh, and, until, and as always, guys, tight lines.